Kia ora, hello. During the medieval period, after the church and the state, there existed something else that bound people together. These organisations existed across class, gender, race, and sometimes religion. Today, we are going to discuss the confraternities and why your impression should have one. That's a pretty big claim. Before we begin, all the links to my sources and further reading are down below. First, let's discuss what a confraternity was. Referred to by many different names, confraternity, confrere, bruderschaft, fraternitas, confraternitas, in short, a brotherhood. These organisations were formed around a common goal. Often they were lay religious groups dedicated to a patron saint. The members would engage in secular religious practices and pursue the advancement of the confraternity's cause, whatever that should be. Confraternities were concerned with the morals and ethics of their members. Charters and rules were drawn up. Members were expected to swear and adhere to these rules. Failure to do so would result in fines or expulsion. Evidence also suggests many confraternities contain provisions for funerals and the saying of masses for deceased members. Some had pensions for widows and orphans of members. Other groups, pensions for members who were unable to work should they become disabled. This was funded by the collection of yearly dues. Membership of a confraternity were varied. Some only allowed women, others only young people. Some were dedicated to the writing and performance of vernacular religious dramas. Others, the raising of funds and running of hospices, the collection of arms and the building of infrastructure. It appears that people were often members of multiple confraternities at the same time. There wouldn't be a person whose life would not be touched by a confraternity in one way or another, either as a member or as a beneficiary. It should be noted here that corporate and trade confraternities existed. These are different to guilds. These organizations were lay religious groups which organized around their trade. It has been asserted that guilds arose from corporate confraternities. I will be releasing a series of videos on the guilds in the future where I'll be speaking about this in greater depth. So watch out for these. Let's speak about some examples of confraternities. We have example of confraternities being formed specifically for the patronization of music. They were known as puis. A pui would be typically dedicated to the Virgin Mary, although others existed devoted to other saints. One such pui was the Confrérie de Jongle de Bourgeois de Arras, formed in 1175. Dedicated to the Virgin Mary, it was a lay religious group for jongleurs that provided burial services, lay religious practices, and food for impoverished members. The flagellant movement is another example of a cone fraternity. Members would swear oaths, travel from town to town in an attempt to atone for their sin and the sin of man and the church leaders, whom they saw were responsible for the plague. We see parish confraternities being formed in the Flemish lowlands around the 13th century. They were always dedicated to Our Lady, they were clerical in nature, and they were mainly concerned with the financing of the lighting and purchasing of church candles, this being a very expensive endeavour. The perk of being a member of these confraternities is having access to the altar at the back of the church and burial services. We have another example of a confraternity, this being the confraternity of St. James of Compostela. This originated around 1250. Its members originally set up this organization to fund and run a hospital to accommodate pilgrims on the way to Compostela. Most members were former pilgrims. However, for a higher fee, prospective pilgrims could join. Why is this important to medieval society? Why did confraternities keep forming? Confraternities are a great example of the organization of medieval society. Unlike the modern and early modern society, which values individualism, the confraternity is based on communalism. The practices and doctrines of these groups were collective in nature. They organized their membership to collect resources that a single member would not have the ability to access. Medieval society relied on associative solidarity. Without modern centralized government and the ideals of nationalism, 
This allowed society to be bound together. Confraternities was another way of solidifying this bond outside of church and feudal association. During the overpopulation of the 13th century and the subsequent famine and plague of the 14th and 15th centuries, Europe was beset with a high number of migrants, especially those with no bonds moving to cities. The confraternities were a way to build new bonds with members, to accept strangers into the community and into an ersatz family. As these confraternities had rules and ethical structures the members must abide by, the new brothers and sisters were now being normalized into their new community with their new family. The confraternity allowed the community to engage in charities to build needed infrastructure to offer care to its stricken members. In a time and place, there was no social safety net or public systems to offer health or protections. The confraternities filled the gaps through the principles of mutual aid. Members were spared the terrors of not being left unburied without mass or being disabled and left unhungry or impoverished. So let's talk about your impression and the confraternity. The confraternity was a large part of the medieval person's life. We see monks and priests creating them in monasteries and parishes, townsfolk, pilgrims and flagellants having organisations. They were everywhere. It could be in a way argued that our medieval clubs are a confraternity. We have come together to walk towards a common goal. As I have said before, I do not build a story for any of my impressions. However, as part of my impression, I believe that if I am engaged in living history, I need to try to understand how a medieval person would think and act and interact with the people around them. It is without a doubt, if you are building an impression during the high or late medieval ages, your impression would have some contact with a confraternity. Some interesting ideas would be to have a confraternity with people within and outside of your group. So when you meet at events, you could have a confraternal meeting. I think it would be really interesting to investigate that space. What processes would have happened and what rituals would have been performed? Any musicians in your local area from different groups could start a Pui. A Pui held competitions of poetry and music. You could hold a competition to find the best poet, for example. I'm a real advocate in looking at historical events and using them to build living history reenactments. This creates a deeper understanding of the people and cultures that we are depicting, and it could be fun as hell. Uh, I also see something like the confraternity as being a great way of building a community across groups. If anyone has come up with any ideas of how they can use the confraternity in their impression, please leave a comment below. And until next time, remember to stay safe, have fun, and keep reenacting.